Hello viewers, we are going to take you through the story of A-Level Physics Paper 2. And this video, we are going to go through the topic of capacitance of a power plate capacitor. So this video is suitable for students in both Senior 5 and Senior 6 offering physics as part of their combination. So before we start, let's first look at the course outline for the course. So A-Level Physics Paper 2 is divided into, five, into four parts. The first part is Geometrical Optics, where two questions come from these topics and a student is expected to answer one. So this is compulsory, you must answer one question from that part. The next part is Physical Optics, or what we call waves, and also here yeah, two questions come from these and a student is expected to answer one. So this one question here and this one question here are compulsory. Then the next part is electrostatics and electricity where three questions come from these topics and another part is magnetism and AC or alternating current where three questions come and it's from these topics and the student is expected to either answer two from here and one from here or two from here and one from here to make the five questions in the paper. So in total you are expected to answer five questions where one is from this part, one is from this part and here in these two it is you to choose. You can say I'll do two here and one here or one here and two here. So in this video previously we have been dealing with electrostatics and it was complete now we have gone to capacitors after which we shall go to current electricity so capacitors like we said here we deal with calculations so the calculations under capacitors include they are divided into five parts the first part is capacitance of a power plate capacitor next is energy stored in a charged capacitor then next is capacitance of an isolated charged sphere and next is arrangement of capacitors in circuits next is joining two capacitors and lastly dielectrics in capacitors so in this video we are going to deal with the part of the first part which is capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor so the notes in physics paper 2 can be found in this book, Mastering Level Physics Paper 2 by this author and I'm the one. So if you need any copies, you can contact me on any of these two contacts, the Airtel or MTN. But in this video, we are dealing with the worked examples. So the book has notes, worked examples and trial questions. But in this video, we shall mainly concentrate on this part of worked examples. So now we can set our topic of capacitance or power plate capacitor. So we need to know what a capacitor is. So capacitors are devices used for storing charge. So this is not there. They are used to store charge. That's the main purpose of a capacitor. So they are used in many electronic gadgets like radios, televisions, and other devices which requires storing charge and here they, they, consi they consist of two metal plates separated by an insulator called a dielectric so I think you saw in the part of calculations part, the last part was about dielectric so that's why we shall concentrate more on what a dielectric is but for now just know that it is an insulator So when we are drawing a capacitor, we use what we call a somatic symbol. So here the symbol will be these two vertical lines, but they are equal. So it's different from a dry cell. For a dry cell, the lines are not of the same length or height. It is One is longer, which is denotes a positive polarity. Another is negative, which is shorter, which denotes a negative polarity. 
But when it comes to a capacitor, both must be of the same height. As you can see it here, they should be of the same height. So that's the difference between the symbol for capacitor and that of a dry cell. So these are what we call the plates. And now this, what you see here, is a diagram of uh, real-life capacitors. So these are the various types of real-life capacitors. I think you, if you open your radio, you'll be able to see most of these gadgets here. So these are what, those are what we call capacitors, and the main aim is to store charge. So now that we have known what a capacitor is, we can go now to the capacitance of a capacitor. So by definition, the capacitance of a capacitor is the magnitude of charge required to cause a change of 1 volt in the PD across the plates of the capacitor. So that's how the capacitor can be defined. Also, you can choose to define it in this way. That the capacitance of a capacitor is the ratio of the magnitude of charge on either place. Charge on either place of a capacitor to, so this is needed because we use the word ratio here, to the potential difference across its place. Therefore, it implies that because the said ratio ratio is like division, so ratio of charge, magnitude of charge to potential difference. So C will be equal to charge over potential difference. I know I choose to rearrange by taking this one this side, I'll come up with Chu is equal to C V. So both these will be used more frequently in this video. So here yeah, we shall define the symbols. Chu is the quantity of charge measured in coulombs. So that means that if charge is given in microcoulombs, we change it to coulombs. Then V is the PD across the parallel plates and is measured in volts. And lastly, C is the capacitance of a capacitor and is measured in farad. So farad is the SI unit of capacitance of a capacitor. But sometimes they can give you in smaller units, they can give you in terms of microfarad, which is mu f, picofarad, which is pf, or nanofarad, which is nf, small n. So what does, how can you convert if you're in that form? You have to remember that 1 microfarad is equal to 10 to power negative 6 of farad. And nanofarad means 10 to power negative 9. Picofarad means 10 to power negative 12. So if, for example, they give you 6 microfarad, to change it into farad, you have to multiply it by 10 to power negative 6. If they give you 5 nanofarad, to change it to farad, you have to multiply by 10 to power negative 9. And if they give you, for example, 12 picofarad, to change it to farad, you have to multiply by 10 to power negative 12. So that's how you can convert. So before you substitute the formula, you have to ensure that the capacitance is in farad. Now what is a farad? So by definition, a farad is the capacitance of a capacitor when the PD across the, pl the capacitor plates is 1 volt. And the magnitude of charge stored on either plates is also 1 one column so pd should be one volt and charge should be one column that will be a farad so that was capacitance of a capacitor now we shall go to capacitance of a parallel plate, plate capacitor So in this case, what we shall consider, we shall consider two parallel plates of a capacitor, each having a charge across which a PDV is applied. 
and the separation between the plates is d as shown below so that means we have we shall need to make some illustration so that will be one plate and this is also another plate separated by distance d and connected to a pdv so we are connected to uh, to this pd here which is v and because it's connected to a pdv there will be charge so this will give this because of this product of this dry cell it will give this one a positive charge and this one a negative charge the electric field intensity will be in that direction from positive to negative so we already saw the relationship between electric field intensity and pd and separation so you know that electric field intensity is equal to pd across the plates and the separation of the plates that is means that e will be equal to v over d so we shall call it equation equation one then we shall also let a to be the area of either plate so the plates the capacitor plates must have the same area chu will also be the magnitude of charge on either plates and epsilon will be the permittivity of the medium between the plates so previously in electrostatics we talked about this permittivity and i believe now you are covered with it so epsilon is the permittivity of the medium therefore from gauss law It implies that electric field intensity is equal to charge density on either plates over permittivity of the medium between the plates. Therefore, shall come and substitute that electric field intensity is E, then charge density is this sigma, and this permittivity is this epsilon. But charge density is the same is equal is charge over area. So this one will be replaced by chu over a and this one will remain that's why there's this division sign then when i change this one to a multiplication sign this becomes a reciprocal that is why it is goes it is going down so this will be equation two where e is equal to chu divided by epsilon a now i have two equations for electric field intensity meaning i can equate the two so when I equate the two, the equation one was this, equation two is this. So I'll come and do that. Then what I will do, when I bring this one this side and take this one here, I'll come up with this step. Then I remember that chu over V is equal to C, which is capacitance. When I remember that, I'll come and replace this one with C to come up with C equal to epsilon A divided by D. But most times, like I told you under electrostatics, we use free space as our medium. Therefore, we shall come and see that if the medium is vacuum or free space, then capacitance will be epsilon naught. So we use epsilon naught to mean permittivity of vacuum or permittivity of free space. And like I said, this is a constant that it will always be given in an examination. Multiplied by A divided by D. So this is the formula we have been waiting for. So you must look for a way of remembering it. So in order, to, in order to remember the formula, we need to go through a number of questions. So question one came from your name. 2002, paper two, questions 10b, Roman one, and says, calculate the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor whose plates are 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters separated by an air gap now air gap means the permittivity is free space of five millimeters so five millimeters is d the first thing to do is to quote the formula then you substitute like i said this is a constant 
then this area will be given by this times this but remember area must be in meters squared therefore this one convert to meters to give you this convert this to meters to give you that then also the separation must be in meters so convert it to meters to give you this then from there you can use the calculator to come up with the answer so this will be the capacitance in farad So that was question one. What about question two? Question two came from your name, 2020, that is the last year. Paper two, question 10C, and says, the plates of a parallel plate capacitor are separated by a distance of two millimeters in air. If the surface area of each plate is five centimeters squared, and the PD and a PD of six volts is applied across the plates. Find the magnitude of ch of the charge on each plate. So what we shall do? We shall say that charge is equal to CV. I think you remember that. Then from there we shall remember that our C is equal to this formula which we have already derived. Then we shall, but there is also still this V, so we'll put it here. Then from there, I'll come and substitute. So substitute for this constant, it is always given. Area, it was here, it should convert to meter squared by multiplying by 10 power negative 4. Then D, it was here, converted to meters to give you this. Then V, it was here, so substitute for V. When that is done, use a calculator and you'll come up with this as the answer. So your SI unit for charge is Coulomb. Then question 3 came from your name 2001. Paper 2 question 9D and says, The plates of a parallel plate capacitor, each of area 2 cm squared and 5 mm apart. The plates are in vacuum, not this word, vacuum, and the potential difference of 10,000 volts is applied across the capacitor. Find the magnitude of the charge on the plate, on the capacitor. So still we shall use the same formula, Q is equal to CV where C is this, after that we shall substitute. Substitute for the constant, substitute for the area, substitute for the separation, and then substitute for the PD. When that is done, you'll use the calculator and come up with this as the charge they wanted in Coulomb. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, and be reminded the next video will be on energy stored in our capacitor so if you have not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button to this video so that you can receive updates when the next video has been uploaded and also if you know any student who's not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that we can all benefit as a family